So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're doing a Kickstarter preview of a brand new kind of war game. Yeah. From, uh, it's from Phalanx. It's called Europe Divided. And it's designed by a friend of ours, David Thompson. Mm -hmm. And... Chris Marling. Marling, that's what it is. I don't want to miss say that. Yeah. So... This is a, a card-driven game or a CDG, and it's a it's a modern, very current kind of a political, militaristic, and also economic um, uh, influence kind of conflict game about Europe struggle. Yeah, so, and it's easy to be like, oh, it's kind of like Twilight Struggle. It's really not. It's very. It, I, I mean, on the surface, because it uses influence, and you it, could say that, but it really has no. Almost no resemblance. No. At all. Um, it's a very cool game. And very cool. There's, there's a lot of stuff going for it. So I wanted to talk about that. It is it, So one side plays um, NATO and the EU. And so your NATO is your more of your um, military side of things. Like your armies have yep. a military symbol on them. And you've got these blue NATO influence dice. And they also control the EU, which is more... In a, you could say it's like an economic and you know social policies kind of a sub-faction and they use the yellow dice yep. um, they don't have any armies obviously and the other player plays Russia nice resurgent easy. Russia yeah so you're using uh, you got all red army pieces and red dice that you're putting out why is that why are they red just kidding <laughs> so basically you've got Western Europe and that's kind of like the NATO player's home area. And then there's um, basically the, the eastern portion of Russia is depicted on the map in a few regions. And that's the Russia's home base. And it really, it's a conflict over um, eastern Europe and the Balkans region, all the former Soviet satellite states. Yep. Um, so, and there's kind of this gray section in the middle. That's the places where you're putting out these influence dice, trying to move in your military units as well. Which your military units are basically there to support your influence dice, yeah. and to sometimes take other influence dice away. So it's a very tight map in reality. It's got this nice big board, mm -hmm. but really, what? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's fourteen or fifteen contested areas. Yeah, contested neutral areas. That's really what the game is being fought over. Now you've got to. If your armies are over in Spain and Portugal, they're going to move through you know, Western and Central Europe to get in there. So you do have to use the rest of the board. But yeah. the real fighting and the victory points um, and the prestigious to be had uh, in these kind of great contested areas. Yep. So you're using a, a hand of cards to do actions. Multi-purpose cards. Yeah, and the cards have a ton of things that they yeah. can do. A whole bunch of symbols down the side of them. Or very few symbols if it's not a very good card. Right. And, you know, you can place an influence dice, you could increase an influence dice, you can move an army, you could build, build an, an army, army. You, can spit, you can use it to gain money. Mm -hmm. There's also um, sometimes a special text action that you can use. Yep. And, it, you know, I'll tell you limitations of where you can do said thing, or if you do said thing, then the opponent gets to, you know, react. And maybe, yeah. you know, if you keep using that Ukraine card over and over again as the Russians... Well, the the Ukrainian separatists get mad, and so they just get more and more free influence from um, the NATO right. forces if, right. if you keep spamming that Ukrainian card. So there's lots of stuff like that. You gotta be careful with what you what you have. The the one thing that stood out to me about the game and the struggle side of it that we're talking about is there are very few cards or actions that directly influence the other side. Yes. Like there there I don't think there's any cards that say Remove like three influence nope. from the. That's not this style of game. Yep. It is, it is intended to really contest each other up to a certain level where you get dominance, and then in order to kind of reduce that dominance and then be able to maybe take get a foothold, you have to use armies. Yes. So it it really is a balancing act between getting you know kind of racing to that six value the dominance level yeah and then kind of positioning your military to support and to maintain that and to maintain that how many times did we move a an army in to protect a six die 
because we we wanted that for a yes. for a headline card. And so that was a very interesting thing. I I actually expected that there would be more of that, but there is none of that. That's not the way this game works. Yeah, this isn't a you know take away two from your opponent. No, you know it's it's not like that. It's it's a race to build up your influence. Yep, and then you got to maintain it. Because the way this works is these dice, you just increase the faces up to six. And if I have a six influence... Uh, you can't get you a six. You can't get to a six. You can get I'm, to a five. Right. But you can't get to a six. The only way you can get to a six, if there's another six there, is to move an army in to destroy that. Yeah, and then I'm to not a six, then I'm a five. Then you got to immediately build it up to a six again, or next round, they may just yeah, I'm rebuild just put it back up. So that was a fascinating element. I think a very interesting design choice i i really really i really liked that and it's it's also very interesting how the game's divided into two kind of periods you have this first period where you're kind of putting out a lot of different bits and pieces and trying to you know spread out as much as you can and then that second period is a lot of stuff is maxed out and so then it's sending an army to just reduce you one pip you know, you got to drive that army across the whole of Europe. That costs a lot of money. So yeah. you've got to have good money. And then you then have to play a card to then, you know, change just one pip. can be, it can, it's your whole yeah. turn. You're like, oh my gosh, was that worth it? So, so the period you're talking about, the first period is 1992 to 2008. So it, that, that really is a period, like you said, of, of building up. And then after that, 98 to, uh, what did it end up going? 2008 to 2019, it, it's like capitalize on that buildup. Yes. A lot of the cards become, the headline cards become very high in value, twos, threes, and fours. And it's like, you've got to capitalize on that. So it, it really is a lot about building, building for the, the current phase while scoring points, but really looking to the end of the games because you know, yeah. oh, this is going to happen and I'm going to be able to really clean up if I'm prepared. Yes. So, so this game really, to be honest, Playing it three, four, five times is what's going to be required for you to really understand all the very powerful cards. Well, so, and then on top of that, this game uses a scoring mechanism. You'll, you know, there's twice during the game, at the end of period one and end of period two, you'll score for however many sixes you have. Called dominance. But a lot of the scoring throughout the game comes from these headline cards. They're victory point objective cards. So and here's here's kind of a look at one, and we'll show you maybe a couple of others. But. Yeah, they they all have a bunch of very different um, requirements yep. in different regions, and so you have to, and, and those are visible as well. That's another thing. Yeah, right. They're sitting up here at the top of the board, so you can see what's going to be scored and what's going to be scored next. And yeah, what you're going to try and score and what yeah. I'm going to try and score. Yeah. I don't score your ones, but I can stop you right. from scoring your ones at and, least. And we found that a lot of times we ended up doing that. Yes. It was almost more important for me to stop you from getting that 3 or 4 than scoring my 1 or 2. Yes. Particularly if there was that kind of a disparity. And th- and those headline cards, that's where the real theme of those two periods comes yeah. in. Lots of text, Honestly. lots of text about the event, and yeah, those because the, the first half that you play with it's stuff, it's ones. stuff like the war in Kosovo, yeah. um, all the revolution in Georgia. It's all those early '90s, you know, conflicts that were going on, yeah. and then the the very the second half of the deck. I mean, it gets to really, really quite. Um, Current stuff. Like yeah, you just yeah. got stuff in Ukraine and Crimea. Well, you had, you know, there was cyber warfare yeah. with the Russians to affect elections and, you know, steal secrets. And they, they've done that in the yes. last two, three years. So, very cool. So, you it, it, that's that's really where the theme of the course of this game comes yeah. out. Yeah. Outside of that, it's just the story of spreading your influence and getting the, you know... Yeah, but the, it's nice having the real history. You get three yeah. or four lines on the bottom of each of those cards. It tells you stuff about some of the stuff in Armenia that I didn't really know about. Right, as well. there's a little, you know, there's a bit of history, but the cards themselves are more, yeah, generic. Here's some actions and some cool stuff with a, a tiny hint of dusty right. history. Well, and I think that would be my one complaint about the game. I, I think you could play this game if you have no interest in history. Absolutely. No interest in history, no knowledge of current events, no knowledge of this struggle. And and so that tells me the theme is a little bit pasted on. But if you're into that, and we are, I was reading my cards. I was like, oh, that's cool. You you know, 
And I could feel that kind of happening, that historical event, but you can play this and really not have that at all if that's what you Yeah, if you were to do. just look at symbols and numbers and dice, yeah. this is still an excellent game. Oh, it's still a great game. It's very, very, very tense. Yep. And we, we felt tension from the very first round. And what I like about it is that it plays very quickly, comparatively speaking. These kind of games, sometimes we sit and we'll play for three, three and a half hours. This plays in about an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, and, and I think further plays, and, and you're going to get it down to maybe even 45 to 50 minutes. Yeah. Because you're not going to have to refer to all the charts and the tables and the and scoring this, conditions. This is all prototype stuff. Right. They'll, They'll have some player aid. Get sharpened yep. up with some nice player aid. Well, they need a little scoring player aid. That's one thing they need. Yeah. One other comment I want to have about the headline cards. The tension really is developed from those headline cards. You already mentioned it. Yeah. They're up here. They're in. They're in. They're out there for everybody to see. But that's where the tension comes from. And also the thing that's really cool about it is both sides are very asymmetric. Very. We, we do the same actions, you know, build an army, move an army, place influence or develop influence or increase influence or develop it. But the scoring is different. Russia is only faced, focused on one side. All of your cards affect red dice. Yes. Whereas the EU and, and NATO, I have to worry, you have to balance that worry about the yellow dice and the, and the blue dice. Because what, what ended up happening to me a couple of times is I kind of start thinking, oh, I got the blue really good. And then the next couple headline cards are focused on EU or yellow yeah. dice. And, and I see that and I'm like, well, I'm going to play my yellow objective cards, yeah. my headline cards, because I know you really have to struggle and I've yep. got a head start in those. Yep. And then, but you had good blue dice. I'm like, well, these NATO ones, I'll just throw those away. Yeah, and, and that, <laughs> that's what's going to end up happening. And But I really like that asymmetry. I think that's very cool. We counted the victory points possible in the EU NATO deck, and I think it was 48. Yeah. And we may be off by one or two. And they may add some more. I don't know. Right. Do that. The victory point totals, if you got every card, it was about 11 short. So that would be about 37. Yeah. So there's a difference there. You, you'll notice that more of the EU NATO cards are threes and fours. More of yours are ones and twos. But you have more of an opportunity to yeah, get them. That's be, why it might be easier to maintain yeah. and things like that. But and, and the other major thing about this game is the replay value, right? Oh yeah. You can play games like Twilight Struggle over and over and over again. Every game is different. Yes, this one. Every every game situation is different. Yep. And um, that's just from the setup of um, the the headline cards. Yep. You use so few of those. Well, you, you end up taking out like four, four of the first period and three of the second period. So there's seven cards. We haven't even seen. You haven't seen. And then there's, how many cards did we end up discarding at the end of the, was it two? Two. So yeah, there's like nine cards when you sit down and play your first time that you're not going to see. And then that's yeah. going to take, my guess is four, maybe five games to ultimately see all of those. And the order in which those comes out oh, it's totally huge. changes the narrative yeah. of your game as well. And then on top of that, you have um, your your faction's advantage cards, mm -hmm. which are also so Very cool. cool. They're just like, here's this, yeah. it's, it's like a bonus power, you can just play it, and it gives you a usually very powerful ability. Um, well, if you don't pay it though, it's you worth get a victory point. point. So, do you play it? Do you not play it? Yeah. So, so to give an example of at least one of those cards from the EU uh, NATO side, one of the cards I played was Russia cannot spend their money f for any actions this turn, and that really hampered you because I think you wanted to move tanks. Yeah. I say tanks, but military, and you have to pay one beyond the first space. You would have needed three or four monies, which you had. Which I had, and I was planning to spend. Yeah, but I, I I liked that card. Another card gave me some money one time when I really needed money. So they're just different little extras. And once again, you're not going to play all of those every no. every game. It's going to take you three, four games to get to get to play all of those. So I think infinite replayability because of the setup of the cards, what's put in the decks. But also, what order they come out randomly, 
even what actions you end up doing. And it play. and again, I'm going to come back to this, it plays very quickly. Very quick. And 90 minutes, I think you could knock this out on the first time. It, yeah. Very easily. It took us longer because we were... Well, yeah. We didn't like, have play aids and we were being corrupted. I was well. like half building a deck and I got kids running yeah. around. Yeah. But yeah, this is... This is... A re- that quick play means this is going to hit the table and you will play this game. Yeah. So a lot of war games are like, this is so great and you play it once. Yeah. And then in six years time you play it again. Well, and part of that is because some of those war games take 10, 12, 14 hours. Exactly. This, this is quick playing. Is, You're going to play this multiple it's times. It's very palatable. You yeah. just whip it out, play it, put it yeah. away. It's got a fairly small table. For yep. instance, this is a much smaller board than we usually play yep. on. Well, and, nice. and, and the other thing, Phalanx has really set themselves apart as being, I think, a high production quality Absolutely. company. I think the graphics are great. I think the box design is good. You, you didn't like the colors used I, on the I, map. Yeah, the graphics were the only thing that I was a detraction for me. And I'll show you the board here in a second. Right. This just the style of the kind of the geometric shapes. Well, colors. yeah, yeah. It's not that's not my. I don't. I, I think favorite. they. I think they did that for contrast so that you could see yeah. what the contested spaces were. I just know but, that they make some beautiful games. Yeah. I, they, there's, Hannibal uh, and Hamilcar and um, Freedom, again, Freedom is, was really This is a prototype, too. so maybe they change Yeah, maybe they'll maybe change they that. I, know, who knows. I really like the dice. You, you know, that that was a nice touch because they could have done counters, just like Twilight Struggle, but they used the dice, and I like that. Your comment to me when I told you what this game was about was, oh, that's genius to yeah. use the dice. It's so much yeah. cleaner. Yeah. Kind of a stack of them, not rooting through them. Right. That's great. Here's, here's all we'll do. Before we, I'm going to show you all of this stuff. Again, it is prototype, but we'll show you some of the mechanics here. And then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts yeah. about the, kind of how this game is. So here's a look at the map. Um, as you can see, you got yourself um, mainland Europe, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And, and then you've got Russia. And it all goes down here to even Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Turkey as well. Um, the only really... That's basically it. And you can see here, so you have... It's, it's difficult to see. And this is what I talked about when, it, when we talked about some of the graphical elements. These green countries are the NATO um, and EU kind of home nation, so to speak. And you've got these red ones are the Russian ones. Now... These gray ones in the middle, and these ones down here, are the, the contested regions. That's really what you're fighting over. And it, as it stands, again, this is all prototype. So there's, none of this is necessarily final production. Some of these elements down here, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, the, the colors are really close to some of these other ones in the north, Caucasian Federal District, you're like I'm presuming that these were contested, and they are. But it, sometimes the colours were not clear, um, and the little the, this geometric kind of patterning and style, whilst it's quite modern, just not my favourite look. But the game itself, you're looking at these major different regions, and all the action happens in this grey section and down here a little bit as well. Uh, there's not really any. You don't contest these areas of the board. This is more of your staging area for your for your military units as you pour them in to the eastern block. Um, you can see there's a number of dice on the board and there's a few other counters. So the counters are the military units. So you've got these little blue NATO armies. A nice little shot of those, little NATO counter, those are cool. And then the little Russian ones just have a kind of a red star again. All this is prototype stuff. But what you're doing in this game is you're, you're placing influence into these contested regions in order to basically control them. It's an area control game effectively, and you do that by spending actions. At the beginning of the game, none of these dice are here, it's completely empty, and you spend actions to, you pay money and you spend actions to put dice out, and then you're spending subsequent actions to increase these by different amounts. Um, when you start getting to like six, that's when you're maxed out. And you'll see here the this the NATO player, the, the European player. I think they call it the European player. Your blue units, your, your blue influence. They your it's your, that's your NATO influence. And then the yellow ones are your 
your EU influence. So as these countries want to join the EU, single market, all that kind of stuff, that's that kind of an influence. You, you think of it that way. And the red is just the Russians only have the red ones to put out. So there's a lot of the asymmetry is right there in front of you of this player's got to control kind of two factions almost, although they use the same deck of cards. You gotta make sure you get enough of both influences out there to influence them militaristically, but also um, you know, economically and socially as well. But honestly, it's a game of putting the dice out, trying to control the values of the dice so that you can score your headline cards. And your headline cards are a huge part of this game. And one thing I really like about these headline cards is they are big. Your normal little playing, these are the action cards that you play with. They're just nice big cards with all the details on it. So this one, it scores three prestige or victory points. If, when it scores, the NATO player has more um, more influence than the Russians in the Czech Republic and Slovakia and in in the Baltics as well. So if you look over here, they have NATO, and it's really important, those colors. Remember, they was blue. It's the blue NATO dice. Well, they've got a plenty of influence from EU, but no NATO influence here in this region. And then in the Baltics over here, well, they've only got one. So this is just <laughs> looking like this is pretty far away. So if, if we say that's kind of a current headline, it goes in this little current headline spot here. And then the Ruskies, they are, they're trying to get an army into Armenia as well as more influence than NATO. So those are the two current headlines. That's kind of what we're going for. An early game, that, that's very feasible. Those are the goals that you'd be looking for. When you look at Armenia all the way down here, she's got nothing in her. So getting influence down there, that's gonna be rough. You get some stuff in Georgia here, to the way, not Azerbaijan. So these are the goals you're working towards. They're face up. Everyone knows what you're trying to do, where your points are gonna come from. So not only are you trying to get this, you're also trying to prevent your opponent from getting this, and vice versa. So how do you do that? Well, the European player's got a deck of cards, and what they're gonna do is they are, you have a hand of four cards, and I really, really like this. And the first thing that you do is that you pick the two cards that you want to play on your turn. You can't play all of these, you only play two of them. And then you're gonna resolve both of those, and then you're gonna draw two more cards. But that's, each turn is playing two cards. There's 20 turns, That it really is that quick. You just kinda of go through it. So your decisions, whilst they're very tough, which ones do I play, how do I go about doing it, it's not overwhelming. And that's a, a big credit to, to this, this game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the UK and Northern Ireland, and Ireland and then we're going to play Spain and Portugal. These two, we're going to kind of hold in our hand. So these two are very strong, powerful cards. They got a lot of actions and a lot of options. So you can hear they can do a whole bunch of the EU actions or a whole bunch of the NATO actions. You can't do both. You pick an either or and on each of these cards. And on top of that, they both this this has a seven and this has a five. This is an initiative value. What you do is, I choose the, to play these, and I put them face down, and the Russian player is doing the same thing. So they're picking a couple of cards, and their cards a little bit simpler. They only they don't have that choice between the sub factions, so to speak. So they don't have as many symbols on the side, and they've got ten influence, ten ten initiative kind of bid. And then you basically put them face down, and then you reveal. I say, ah, I've got. 12 in, in, initiative, and the Russian player's like, rats, I only have 10. So the European player goes first, and you have to remember, they're trying to achieve this goal up here. So they're trying to get NATO power in uh, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, as well as the Baltics. Baltics can be a tough pill to swallow. Well, I really, so the first thing that they're gonna do is with this card, Spain and Portugal, they are going to purchase one influence dice. And the purchase cost for that is two monies. So you have your money tokens here. So you pay two money, the euros in this instance, and I can that enables me to place a brand new die where I don't have one. 
don't have one here, so we're going to place one right there. And that's the whole action with that card. The card gets discarded. Now, for my second card, because I play both of them together in whatever order I choose, this one, I'm going to use... So, I'm going to use this box here, which is plus four influence in a place you already have influence. Already have influence here, we're going to increase it by four to five. Well now, all of a sudden, we have a whole bunch of influence in the Czech Republic and Slovakia, so we're looking pretty for the top line of this, because uh, Russia's going to have to invest a lot to kind of contest us there. The Baltics, on the other hand, eh, that's not looking so hot. The Russians then get to go. They pay, play their pair of cards, and they're thinking, hmm, this is a lost cause. I need to defend myself here in case they try to push in here, but I also need to make headway down to Armenia. And at the beginning of the game, you start off with a whole bunch of armies in here, and they need to get an army, and they need to get some influence down there. So the first thing, what they're going to do on their turn, I think, is that they, they're going to move one army into the Baltics, just to protect this. This acts as a buffer against the dice being decreased. So if the, uh, if the, if the European player was to, to move an army in here, which there's some movement restrictions and this would be illegal, if they move in here, this gets reduced down to a five. And that's important because as long as I have a six here, this dice can never be made into a six. You're not allowed to do that. You can only get it to a maximum of five. So what you would do if you had a six and a five, boop, you move that guy in here with a card, you decrease this to a five, and then I play another card and I increase mine to a six. Whenever you use these and they interact like that, this gets thrown away. So it's expensive to do that, but all of a sudden I've just flipped and you know the control of this area. That's a big deal for scoring. So that's the Russian players kind of safeguarding themselves by putting this buffer, because if two armies ever meet, they just destroy each other, right? That's it. So this remains the same. So they're protecting themselves. It's a little bit of a defensive move there. And then they're going to try and move another army down to Armenia. Armenia's one, two spaces away, because this region connects to Georgia, which connects to Armenia. The first move is free, and the second move costs us one ruble. So we'll have to spend that. Now we've got a guy in Armenia. All right, that's something. And next turn, we're going to look to try and put some influence there to meet this criteria here. But that's really what a turn is. You then draw another couple of cards into your hand. Each player does that. You move the turn track along, and the turn track tells you at this point you're going to start moving and putting new headlines out so that you have this constant flow you're going to try and score these, you'll have the next ones out available. And that tells you what's coming up next. So, you know, next on the docket, the Russians are going to try and get six influence in Belarus. It's all they need to do to score two victory points. So that's their forthcoming one. And the, the European one, they need six influence in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. And that's EU influence. Well, we've already got a five there, so we're really close to putting this one out. So I'm definitely going to put this one out, because you have this hand of three of those to choose from. You try to pick ones that are advantageous. Maybe you already have it, or you're already close to getting it. Because um, these, these come up and they trigger very quickly as you put them out. So it's, it's this mad struggle to maintain your strength and to gain support where you can, trying to get these objectives. But again, they're open, so it's very tense. It's obvious what you're trying to do, trying to disguise that and bluff things for the near future in your hand of these um, of these headline cards is really important. So you'll usually have a hand of three of these that it's kind of like the, it's the next ones that are going to go into this space. So if I can if I can kind of work towards some of these hidden ones, Whilst these, I'm doing these things, that's very hard to do because you don't have a lot of actions. But if you can do that and get a leg up, you can really make some, make some good headway. And then the board starts to get into this really tight and tense situation. Everything's fives and sixes by the end of the game. Altering influences, um, it's not impossible, but it requires a lot of resources. 
and it can really swing on some initiative and some excellent card play. Uh, if you get a bad draw on the last turn, you, it can really hurt you. If you don't have enough army movement cards or you don't have enough influence change cards, you can get into some pretty tight situations here. But it's really fun. You kind of doing this spreading out, trying to capture as much, you know, areas, as many areas as possible. But then when it gets to this stage, it's really like a second Cold War almost. And it's just a really fun feel. In what's a really small area, it's very tight and frankly, a very quick playing game. So th there's a lot of stuff to really enjoy here. What we'll do is we're going to wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that's a look at the game. Um... I had a great time playing this. I, I think that's the one thing I could say I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, it was... Really enjoyed it. It's a fun game. It's, so you get the you get the kind of the tension mm -hmm. from the headline cards, but you also get that struggle from your own hand of like, how do I, how do I make this work? Yeah. But you've only got four cards in your hand, so yeah. it just isn't overwhelming. There's a lot of limitations. And it all, it's all fairly plain and simple. Yeah. It's, you've got your easy little actions, you do them. Yeah. I'm not, I don't have to read seven cards over and over again to try yeah. and make it work. Like some of the other heavier games, yeah. it's, it's very simple. But fairly it's still quick. Like, yeah. <sighs> well, and, and we didn't really talk a lot about it, but the initiative battle at the very beginning of every round, yep. I think at times it felt innocuous. But there were a lot of times where I was like, I got to win this. Yes. Because there was one area that we were fighting over. Well, there were times where I'm like, I've got to lose this. Right, right. Because I want to clean up after yeah. the other. So that became, I think that really became more important as we got, mm -hmm. one, nearer to scoring rounds. Yes. And you basically have a scoring round every other round. Right? Yes. Give or take. Yeah, no, it's There are 20 round. turns, so you get like 10 opportunities. It became very, very tense because I'm like, oh, I got to get that to a six and then I got to move an army in there. So that was very cool. I think at first I underestimated the importance of that, but I think near the end of the game it became very important to understand that I liked that tension. Because yes. am I going to win this? Oh, I got I got 10 influence on my cards. Is that enough to overcome you? Yeah. And then and I'm sat here like He's going to put out a bunch of stuff here. Do I have enough to throw an army in there and then like and, and move yep. myself back yep. up? All this kind of stuff. So that that was a really cool element we didn't necessarily uh, touch on. And in the games we've played, it's 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 one of those cool games that also I think the score is going to be really close. This is going to be a game I don't know that you're going to run away with. No. I guess you could theoretically if you just happen to get the right cards at the right times to score all of your headline cards. But... I mean, we, we battled it out, and we were within three points, and it really came down to a couple of cards at the end that you hadn't yeah. played that gave you three points. And it, so I, I felt like it's a very competitive game, very close, very balanced. It is a challenge, yes. in my opinion, to run the EU and uh, NATO. I don't know that if you're playing with someone that hasn't played, I think you've got to control the more challenging just because it's it's harder to get your... Well, there's a little bit extra to think about. The yeah. Russians have a bit more limitations with... They can do a lot of military stuff. Yeah. But them trying to put out as much influence is maybe a little bit more difficult at times. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's different. That's all. So, yeah, I, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had a fun time with this one. Um, I'm excited to see a final production of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's Phalanx. They, yeah, they, they do a good job. They pimp out the cards. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just curious to see what they do with it. But this, I, I'm still blown away by what they condensed into an hour, hour and a half game. Yeah, it, it it's feels really like, impressive. It feels like a much bigger game than it is. Yes. I, I don't know if that even makes sense, but it feels like there's more there than I think meets the eye. Absolutely. I think a lot of people are going to sleep on this, and I, I don't know that... I, I, you got to get your hands on a copy of this. I think it's good. I really do. Yes, it is. I, this fills a great kind of a niche in your mm -hmm. in your kind of war game collection. Yeah, it's not really a war game. Well, it's a conflict. Yes, you know, it's a conflict type game, not necessarily a war game. But yeah, I, this is great. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Back this if you want to. Um, so and it goes to Kickstarter on June the tenth. If they're watching this, then I, it's already on there. Well, that's true. <laughs> but just be aware of that. Yes. So. So yeah, you're, you're right. If you're watching, watching, but if yeah. you're watching this in August, <laughs> yeah, it's still a good game. I'm sure you can get your hands yeah, on when it. When it comes to retail, retail. this is an yeah. excellent game.
Yeah. And I'm sure that they'll pimp out the components even more than they did. This is all prototype stuff. So. Yeah. That's just who Phalanx are. They make good quality games yep. at this point. So very impressed. This is Europe Divided. This is designed by David Thompson and I forget again. Chris, Chris Marley. Marley. Oh, gosh. Um, pretty cool game. Check this out. Good job, guys. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. We've been the players8.com.